So hello everyone and welcome to the second webinar of our webinar series. My name is Manuela Schlemmer from the Data Intelligence Offensive in Vienna. And this is our topic for today, uh, Operated Business Model Options in a Federated Trust Data Ecosystems. The speakers for today are Andreas Huber, CEO at Governance One, and Bert Utermark, partner at Trusted Data Analytics. This is our short agenda for today. I will give you a short introduction into Trust for those of you who don't know the project. And then Andreas and Bert will already continue with the main parts of the webinar with the data markets value creation. Then they will go on with the taxonomy and the USPs and the business sustainability in Trust. In the end, they will also tell you how uh, you can get involved in the trust project. So then let's start already with the introduction into trusts. So trusts is a Horizon 2020 project uh, funded by the European Commission and its aim is to develop a data sharing platform for a secure and trustworthy data exchange uh, and GDPR compliant data exchange. It is based on the experience of two data market projects, the Data Market Austria and the International Data Spaces, and it will allow the integration and adoption of future platforms through interoperability. The, project, uh, the objectives of the project are to uh, create a secure and trustworthy European data market um, by connecting different user groups and providing generic functionalities for innovative applications and services. In the project, we also want to identify and overcome the legal and ethical and technical challenges of cross-border data markets. And this uh, so that we can exploit the full potential of the European data economy. Um, to demonstrate and realize the potential of the trust platform, there are three use cases in the financial and telecommunications sector, which you can also read here on the slide. Uh, for this purpose, trust brings together technology and data providers, research institutions and multipliers. The trust technology and the use cases are also accompanied by business considerations so that the project results are sustainable beyond the duration of funding. This is very important for us. Our project is also very international. Our consortium consists of 17 partners based in nine different countries. So this was it already from my side. And I would like to hand over to Andreas and Bert. Uh, about the operator business model options in the Federated Trust Data Ecosystem. The floor is yours. Hi, uh, and thanks, Manu, for the introduction um, or the introduction to the project. Um, so, we're going to have a look today, um, a set on aspects of the um, business model of trust, um, in particular funneling in from a discussion of uh, business model considerations pertinent to data markets. Uh, and it's quite an important topic because if you look back over the last 10 years, there have been uh, a number of... Um, uh, Manuela, please put your mute yourself. There have been a number of uh, attempts on data markets, um, most of which have failed. Now, we've seen an emergence of data markets um, over the recent years. Um, but the question of, of course, um, how can we use this to support the European data economy and uh, uh, in this sense, then also fulfill our project mandate at Trust, which is a European Commission Fund project. Uh, my name is Bert Uttermark. I'm based in Vienna. I'm a partner at uh, Governance One, and I'm also here in Vienna uh, with our subsidiary Trusted Data Analytics, and I'm going to guide you through the presentation together with Andreas Huber, our CEO. Let's get started. Cool. 
If we look at the European data strategy, um, you've seen obviously that um, um, towards the beginning of uh, last year uh, was a release of uh, what I would call an update to so the new European data strategy. Um, and uh, it's uh, becoming a bit more firm in what we try to achieve. So um, as you're interested in the topic, you will certainly be aware of the nine um, uh, industrial um, data spaces, data clouds, um, which are interconnected uh, and complemented by other elements such as the um, open uh, science data cloud. Um, and uh, there are a number of initiatives underway, uh, most notably Gaia X, that explore how we can use common standards and an approach to bring it all together and have a governing framework. Um, this is all to overcome um, what uh, originally seems to be a bit of a, a detriment uh, in the European data economy, where we've got a lot of fragmentation, not the least driven by the um, multitude of jurisdictions that we face, um, and a lack of uh, big tech players. Uh, so um, fundamentally, we have these uh, three blocks, uh, um, which we may want to see. On the one hand, you've got China with a very centralistic um, approach, and then we've got big tech in the US. And the question is, where does uh, Europe fit in? And uh, ultimately, um, we see value in diversity or unity in diversity even, um, and uh, have uh, certain values and imperatives which we want to put first. Um, so, of course, we want to drive economic growth uh, and we want to enable the digital economy, uh, but this all is based on a solid set of rules um, and these are either encoded in regulations and laws um, or in ethical standards. Um, and so, uh, topics like uh, GDPR, um, data sovereignty, the handling of private data are um, pertinent to many of the things we try forward here. So um, trust has been set up, um, building on what uh, Manuela said, um, uh, with three mandates. So first of all, top layer here, yeah, um, we want to build a data market um, that uh, explores a certain um, state-of-the-art technological attributes. Uh, we focus on sovereignty, we focus on privacy conservation, we focus on security. Um, and then to this end, uh, there are a number of use cases which we'll come to briefly in the presentation. As a second step, now we try something new, totally new, which is a data market federation. So um, whilst a number of data markets have failed, we have uh, actually uh, recently somewhat successful examples uh, look at uh, Caruso, let's say, which is a uh, mainly OEM-driven uh, automotive supplier uh, market in uh, Germany, but obviously open for Europe and the world. Or, or look at Davex, our partners in France. Um, and then the point is here, um, all of them have obviously uh, cracked the case a bit by going more um, pull specific. So we look at solutions to industry problems rather than push, which is just about selling data. Um, and uh, now the question is, how can we avoid uh, that we see a fragmentation here? And, and we try to, to explore aspects of federation. So what framework, both um, in uh, standards, but also technologically can we provide to bring data markets together? And last but not least, bottom layer, um, um, obviously, uh, as it's a European Commission funded project, um, we want to make an impact on the European data economy. So, um, fostering common standards uh, and uh, explicit and implicit agreements uh, and uh, ability to interoperate to either form more homogenization as far as ecosystems go or to enable friction between ecosystems is also one of our tasks. Now, with this, we go straight into uh, a quick recap of what data markets are uh, to different constituents 
Uh, and to this end, I'll hand over to my colleague, Andrea Suber. Thank you, Bert. Uh, welcome from my side as well. Andrea Suber is my name. And uh, I will shortly go through uh, some findings we had in an in a earlier project called Data Market Austria. Uh, which was from 2016 to 19, and uh, the trust project is uh, using insights from that project. Bert, please go to the next slide. Um, the question, and this is a, a rather important uh, slide for, for, for us, is the functional perspective on uh, what is a data market, what is data sharing, and uh, if, as you can see, the data sharing platforms that is something which um, so to say is a, is a common things which is well established over the, over the last decades um, there are many different types of, of uh, sharing interacting of data and there are lots of, of different data platforms um, what what is so to say one one level higher is the the idea of having data spaces which means you have data in uh, data circles or data spaces which means you have a, a broader view on it and you have maybe a different data sources and you create a data space and uh, that is something which is so to say uh, comparatively new. The IDSA is, is uh, strongly focusing on the data space aspect. It's also called data space uh, association or industrial data space was the origin. So um, from data sharing to data space, uh, to data marketplace and to data driven ecosystems, that is so uh, to say uh, in development uh, evolution of uh, the idea of sharing data between entities and uh, you can see there are lots of, uh, so to say, breaking points or problems on the on the uh, edges of that. So between data sharing and data spaces, uh, it's important to think about what is central, what is decentral. The idea of data spaces is that data is more decentralized or what is our approach, or what was our approach at the data market Austria is that the data sovereignty is with the data owners, so the data storage and data maintenance is decentralized and in the data spaces the data is met in data circles, Datenkreise, um, so that different users can, can use it on one space but don't need to store it and maintain it on one place. That is, so to say, one of the biggest differentiation to the big platforms, the big data sharing platforms, where you have one central, normally you have one central uh, place to store the data. What, what we were discussing uh, and researching in Data Market Austria was the idea how to let's create data marketplaces, which uh, focus on the, on the data as an, as an asset, how to exchange data as an asset and, and uh, Bert will later refer to a couple of findings and taxonomies of data markets and we'll go deeper into, into that. What uh, is the objective if you look on a, on a data market idea or concept is that at the end we have a data driven ecosystem where uh, a certain number of data platforms, data spaces, data marketplaces can interact in a data-driven ecosystem. And that is one of the ideas of uh, the Data Market Austria, was of the Data Market Austria, and is now an idea of the uh, Trusts platform to create uh, an interactive uh, network of uh, marketplaces, data spaces, and sharing platforms. Next slide, please. So when we when we discussed about what are the um, functionalities of um, a data market, then you can uh, distinguish between some core processes, some technological uh, ideas and, and infrastructures. Then, and this is a new thing in the, in the, in the data world, is the data services and of course uh, the user management. You can see it on the four different colors, just as an, as an example, um, that of course, 
everything need to have an onboarding, uh, data, data set discovery and arrangements, contract management and transaction workflow. And of course, uh, evaluation, who did what, the, the classical brokerage questions. But on top of that, um, it's important to have these these four points security and and so on. So uh, that is that is important to think, and that is what we researched on. Uh, what could be the functional blocks in in the necessity to interact with different uh, users, having their data stored decentralized, but uh, want to exchange, maybe trade her data. Uh, on a on a on a platform like the data market. Next slide. So in the idea, the concept, you uh, create a data market, whether it's B two B only, or it's maybe B two B to C, or it's maybe government to business or government to government, whatever. Whoever wants to exchange data wants to meet on a data market. Um, you have on the one side the data owners maybe it's different from data providers sometimes it's data resellers but at the end you have a data provider and you have a data buyer and for that you need a certain uh, infrastructure you need to have uh, the, the rights the asset rights management you need to have so to say the uh, different uh, possibilities to use and you need to have a, a technical basis as a data market and the data market needs a certain uh, amount of infrastructure. It needs to have an operation and it needs, of course, to have third parties uh, providers for, for data uh, transformation, trade data analysis or data presentation. And uh, there is one role which uh, we discovered could become more and more Im uh, important is the, we call it independent brokers or data entrepreneurs. Uh, we will see that on the next slide, Bert. Oh, this is a bit blurred, I'm sorry. So this is one of the um, ideas, the, the roles and intermediates of a basic data market. You can see the data provider in up, uh, middle up. So these are providing data and you have a data market customer, the one with the shopping cart. Maybe that's a, as a company which is looking for uh, climate data, spatial data, or any other kind of uh, data which could be interesting for end users. Uh, the data market customer as a business is looking for dirt data, which uh, they compute in their premises and sell it to end users. Maybe navigation facilities or whatever kind of, of insights which could create it uh, out of, of data, big data, small data, whatsoever. So um, on the top left, you have a service provider. You have on the very left, uh, research, education, development, and you have, of course, the infrastructure provider. And what, what we developed or what we found out in our research is that there is one role in the middle, which is called, we call it broker, data broker, data entrepreneur, who might be, so to say, a kind of key role in that game of uh, bringing together data providers and data customers, data market customers, not end customers. Um, we will come back to that later when we go a bit deeper into the ideas of how to create uh, the interaction on the market. Next slide, Bert. So thank you very much, uh, Andreas. Um, so this pretty much coming from uh, the experience of the Data Markets Austria project. Um, and then now we, of course, move on. Uh, Data Market Austria was 16 to 19, and now 20 to 22 uh, is the trust project. And um, this runs in parallel to a number, of course, of um, other initiatives, um, both on a country level um, and also uh, funded by the European Commission, uh, most notably, of course, um, Gaia-X um, or uh, Safe Deed. Um, so I would like to take you through uh, our thinking process and uh, the process we followed so far in the first year of the Trust Project to understand better what makes data markets tick 
um, what USPs can be identified and how can all of this come together in sustainable business models. So first of all, and most notably, um, our colleagues from the uh, Delft University of Technology have conducted a study uh, mostly in the automotive space um, where they really did a deep dive uh, on six uh, data markets uh, to understand what are they doing. Uh, so what is their USP, what is their special ingredient that they believe uh, creates value for customers and that they believe potentially makes them viable and sustainable as a business in their own right. And so we've got uh, more, let's say, things that you may know from your day-to-day -day usage like TomTom. Tom. Um, we've got uh, more, um, um, let's say, uh, industry-specific uh, B2B OEM-driven um, data market like a Caruso. Um, and we've got um, the thought leaders like IOTA. Um, and uh, what we can see here in the actual chart is that each of them have chosen distinct pathways to uh, achieve and attain what they deem uh, sustainable for their own needs. And here it already starts because um, let's say if you look at TomTom, Tom, this is something that you may uh, know, that you may even use in form of an application for navigation. Um, uh, this is uh, a, a form of, let's say, data aggregation and then actually like a type of data market that uh, in the sense of trust we're not focusing so much on because we want to explore here data markets that act as intermediaries and facilitators brokers to enable um, data exchange transactions. Um, uh, and this is important. Um, so we don't look at uh, proven business models. Proven business model might be uh, one that involves um, data aggregation and predominantly um, trading of proprietary data sets. We want to, to really enable in a decentral fashion um, the exchange of data with uh, added rich functionality like, for example, analytics. Um, and uh, this also happens uh, in a way that uh, is in the philosophy of the European uh, data strategy where we talk about interoperability uh, about uh, open standards uh, and about a decentral approach. So um, the value of the diversity brought together. Um, um, and then the, if you look at it here in this chart already, and these are just like six or seven data markets for that matter, um, very different approaches. Um, um, if you look uh, at, uh, let's say Caruso, uh, as a consulting data marketplace, um, on, of course, OEM automotive uh, um, center, so between OEMs and um, um, car manufacturers, um, utilizing on uh, mobility data, but it's also used, for example, to bring about um, what one could describe as an ecosystem, as an incubator for innovations uh, new services and applications in that space where even consultative aid is extended to constituents. We also have something here like IOTA um, and, and uh, let's say IOTA as a data marketplace uh, comes again from a different philosophy. Here we want to look at uh, a meaningful viable use case for the application of blockchain. Uh, you all know IOTA. Um, and then so um, uh, when we talk about data markets, um, even just looking at the seven, it's a very diverse field because um, players come from very different backgrounds and different philosophies which informs what they're doing. And then we look at them and at a more aggregate level then, um, one can try to abstract from here. So um, what, uh, um, the colleagues at Delft University of Technology have done is uh, they try to 
say, okay, look, we, we have these seven markets here, we have a deep dive, but ultimately, for anybody who wants to check their data market business model, or who wants to build the data market, um, one can go generic and apply a structure that is common to the elements that define a business model. Um, and then so on the right-hand side, they have uh, pretty much business model elements. Uh, and, and so um, what we then see when we map uh, data markets against these categories, so for example, who are the customers uh, that I actually target? Um, who has access to my platform? Um, how do I use uh, um, different revenue streams? pricing mechanism, um, then, then patterns emerge. And this is a, a, a valuable double check to uh, either um, uh, on, on a whiteboard, so to speak, using also the business model canvas, um, define how a data market and data market operator may function. Uh, uh, and uh, it's also a good check for, for existing components that come together or existing data markets. So in the most abstract form, uh, then uh, fundamentally we've got a framework here that we will apply and there is a tool um, that uh, is uh, maintained by Delft University um, to develop uh, business models. And, and this here is uh, pretty much the customized version for data markets. Now, We've been working with this, and then of course this comes from the academic side. And uh, to be fairly honest, it's quite complex. Uh, we've been struggling with it because when we look at trusts, you remember what we wanted to do, three things, data market, data market federation, and uh, ecosystem facilitation. Um, to use an existing model like this for bottom-up creation of a viable business model is not an easy task. So let's step maybe a little bit back and then and, and, and get a bit more aggregate. Um, this here is, is a, um, uh, a nice research byproduct of the Data Market uh, Austria project. And uh, on the left-hand side, you can of course see where marketplace platforms fit in. Yeah? You've got a product, in this case, data, um, and you trade it, and guess what? You've got a marketplace. Um, the problem is just, unless you're very specialized, um, it doesn't fly on its own. So a merely transaction-based pricing model for um, plain vanilla trading of data as a product um, is difficult, not the least because um, uh, the, the big elephant in the room, the pricing of data, has not been solved. Data functions very different as an economic product um, than, than other things we see in economic theory. Um, so data hardly ever is a commodity um, because um, data sets are unique in a way. I mean, if you have a weather data station, then it's just this one weather data station. Uh, only on very rare occasions can you have weather data for a certain uh, microgeography from multiple sources. Uh, and, and hence, uh, anything you learned about pricing um, uh, that pretty much assumes uh, transparency and commoditization doesn't apply. Um, the same is also about the marginal value. So reuse of data, um, how do you go about it? Um, if you sell a data once, um, then um, what is the value as compared to the second sale? And as data can be reused at, own, at its own um, purpose, then what is valuation like? I mean, like, does data have an inherent value or does data only gain a value in context and usage? Um, and uh, hence, uh, if one thinks about data business model archetypes, there are other aspects that come into play. And Andreas mentioned already, like, the importance of brokerage either through sophisticated uh, automated systems or through um, professional services where we could think of um, facilitated data circles. 
again, we need to move away from data as a product and look at problem solutions, business problem solutions that may or may not require data. And this is the anchoring point, not the sale of the data. Uh, and of course, then you've got subscription models and you also bring services in the mix where ultimately context specific, solution specific um, services need to be added to data. Think of algorithms, think of services as IT, um, uh, services in, by means of a uh, service oriented architecture that come into play. And if you bring all of this together, you enter very quickly at a business ecosystem. So let's go back then to uh, Business School 101. Uh, let's build a business model. Um, so on the lower left, um, you are aware, of course, uh, whatever business you have, uh, you need to have a value creation model. So what do you focus on? What is your value disciplines? What are your customers? Through what channels do you use them? Do you reach them? Um, you've got the profit model, where you've got different uh, variants of uh, revenue streams. You need to match your cost uh, and then you need to be very clear about your um, unit uh, economics. Now, uh, to this end, um, of course, this needs to be bound together by a virtuous cycle. Um, and then uh, following um, what we want to achieve in line with the European data, econ data economy strategy, um, uh, from a data market operator perspective, we of course want to keep our clients, right? I mean, otherwise you're never going to make money, uh, but we don't call it lock-in, we rather call it rich modular bundling, because as it's an open decentralized architecture, um, it is imperative that constituents got choice. Um, uh, and uh, if you think about virtual cycles, so things that kind of amplify and stabilize what we have as uh, a business model, then of course in the marketplace, you've got multi-sided network effects. And um, it is then important to move beyond the mere thought of the more data, the merrier, because if you have plenty of data, then plenty of data users will come. Uh, that's not exactly the case because a data market is not an Amazon. And in the, in the uh, most abstract sense, we talk here about interoperability of um, algorithms and components. And it becomes very difficult here because you can have this discussion on the level of a data marketplace. Uh, but as Andreas has shown um, um, with uh, the uh, model we learned from our friends at uh, IDSA, um, data markets are part of a, let's say, hierarchical or onion model of functions that are deployed by uh, constituents to solve their business problems. And ultimately, um, we may be misguided just having this discussion about business model architecture just for data marketplaces, but we also need to have it at a level of components and applications, because it may very well be that ultimately what is needed to solve uh, the problem of an automotive OEM supplier um, is not the actual sale of data sets, but is the underlying uh, computing capability, components and applications. Um, uh, it might be uh, then uh, the computing infrastructure that needs to be bundled with it. And particularly if you think of small and medium businesses, or if you think of government, government organizations or research organizations, um, that uh, may want to also procure computing infrastructure um, and not the least also auxiliary services. May it be uh, to, uh, kind of trust services where we have certification of components um, in the wider ecosystem or may it be guidance for ensuring uh, the quality of data sets and metadata. Um, pretty much in many, many cases uh, in uh, small and medium businesses, even helping them to embark on the journey of digital transformation. And is this, as this is an amalgamation, kind of a hodgepodge of different plays, discussing business models and what might be uh, viable and sustainable becomes very difficult. And uh, it also provides a challenge to us. 
because if you look at what then does the rivalry among existing competitors and the other um, competitive threats depicted here uh, for simplicity with the uh, good old style Porter model uh, comes about, um, then, then there are many questions about that are not easy and trivial to answer. If you start at the top left, um, what about uh, the existing rivalry? Um, is there actually really something like rivalry between data markets? Because data markets, at least the ones that have either survived the last 10 years or have sprung up in the last couple of years, I don't think they're really competing with each other. Um, the real competition might be in item number three, top left, um, where we see that uh, what makes a market a market, which is the facilitation execution of a financial transaction to an underlying data exchange. Um, the real competitiveness comes probably from the big tech players. If you look at um, the, the, the app stores and their added uh, abilities, um, take for example uh, Azure, um, they started with a data marketplace uh, commingled with an application data marketplace. And this thing died down and guess what? Right now it's coming back because uh, hybrid cloud uh, and, and using multiple cloud systems is, is very common. Um, and, and there's a richness of applications that can be used, of, of algorithms that can be used towards uh, data. Um, and uh, they now add pretty much a payment function for exchanging data. Um, and um, given that in, in many cases, uh, the uh, valuation of data is not clear, and they obviously are in the lead here. Um, looking at the threat of new entrants uh, top right, um, then the question is, of course, uh, if it's a, like a, a race to a bottom, if I just look at the market functionality, is it just like one of many functionalities in a bundle of functionalities that needs to be provided together? Um, then uh, maybe it's not really something that is uh, viable in its own right. Um, also looking at uh, the power of the buyers. Um, certainly a data market provides certain functionality which initially may be only found um, provided by such data markets. Uh, but then um, uh, where do we go from here? Because um, ultimately, if I have two big industry players, and we even have this in the trust projects uh, with financial institutions and telco companies, um, big players can always create a one-to-one -one data exchange, bypassing data markets, thereby not allowing the value capture by standards brought about and technology deployed by data markets. So. Obviously, a plain vanilla data market is just like a conduit to trade data doesn't do it. So there must be a special source. And it is kind of links to what we had originally with the um, seven data markets from the automotive space. Um, data market needs to have something special on top, a USP, unique selling proposition. Um, and what could it be? Uh, and and, and, and uh, is this then viable? So infrastructure provisioning, uh, particularly for the smaller players, um, uh, seems to be um, quite common but from big tech, right? I mean, like uh, you, of course, have the app store, you have the data exchange, you now can also put a value to the data you exchange, um, defining to whom and under what conditions. Um, and then you just like have your um, computing power and your storage right with it. Uh, Proprietary trading, of course, might be an option. Now, we said we don't want to look into becoming a, a uh, um, aggregator or, or data agency. Um, but what uh, a number of data markets have done, um, for example, Davex or the uh, Telecom Intelligence Hub, um, then uh, there is uh, harvesting of publicly available data enriching uh, and uh, provision of quality control, both on the metadata and the data level. Um, this is something that provides value. Incubation and consultation, um, we've uh, seen that. 
Um, we had the example of uh, Caruso. Uh, backward integration, um, because we find that whilst there is an increasing awareness, uh, particularly of small and medium businesses, of the value of data and uh, the potential um, as a secondary business model to monetize uh, on the data. Um, the data governance, uh, data stewardship, uh, handling of data is not well defined in many organizations, um, which in turn, from the perspective of the data market, also poses a problem. So there are uh, organizations that lend a strong hand to uh, such constituents. Maybe federation. No? I mean, like we had this conversation before, um, the more the merrier, um, network effects, uh, maybe I can do the Amazon. Um, data market federation. Now, data market federation is something we have not seen yet in the wild. And this is a particular focus here of the trust project, um, saying, hey, we've got specialized data market. The idea of the data mall, so the uh, shop that has everything, did not fly. But now that we have specialized data markets with their own specialized USPs and they're emerging and they're growing in numbers, um, then maybe bringing them together as the mall 2.0 um, uh, and also linking them to the industrial data clouds we now will see emerging in Europe, uh, this might be, of course, a way to go forward. If you want to have it more small, then um, Ultimately, um, maybe I don't want to concern myself uh, as, as a business or as another entity with uh, the pricing of data, but I know that when I collaborate in a certain uh, problem space, uh, for example, along a value chain, then I can, of course, uh, create value together uh, and then the actual pricing becomes a secondary topic. So data circles, data spaces, or for large organizations, even the ability to white label the technology stacks that form data markets are important. Industry and sector specificity, we've seen that in the example of automotive. And of course, the dream, the data ecosystem, because ecosystems live a life of their own and stabilize themselves. So comprehensive interoperability, the sale of data assets, um, or potentially even um, app stores with uh, fully certified and checked uh, application services. Um, this, by the way, is an important point when we discuss data markets. I think not only does it move beyond the transactional sale of data, um, but uh, it also leads to collaboration in it and the both-sided sale or let's say exchange of data assets. Data assets are not just data sets, but are also algorithms and applications. Now, and after this uh, more theoretical review with our friends from the Technical University of Delft, we are now at the crossroads at Trust, uh, and uh, we are currently starting to draft a first report uh, uh, for the mid of the year. Um, then follow up on, of course, by the final to look at how does this commingle with the mandate of trusts and what aspects can trusts actually research to become sustainable in its own right. So, um, whilst uh, my colleague Andreas Huber will, will talk about federation and interoperability, um, I look at the actual data market solution and uh, the mandate here of trusts was to look at data sovereignty, uh, preservation of data privacy, and uh, security. And uh, to that end, um, obviously, uh, with the industrial partners we have in the consortium, we look at um, aspects that are novel. Um, we have three use cases here with financial service institutions and telco operators. Um, uh, anti money laundering, agile marketing, and uh, customer support services, um, where um, state of the art uh, technology uh, is applied to preserve data privacy. Um, the question 
that we need to ask ourselves is then again, is this something that will uh, enable um, a, a standalone business model for trust? Is this really a standalone USP? Or is this not one of the aspects that Andreas mentioned, where data market is an amalgamation of technological capabilities and ultimately the big players will embrace standards uh, that will come about, technology that will come about as an output of the project. Um, but uh, um, can this be monetized by the platform itself? And the question we will ask ourselves here is what becomes a common service as integral part of the platform so that uh, less sophisticated, less economically potent players, so not the banks and the telcos, can also uh, utilize on this. Um, uh, and then uh, where are there limitations where we simply contribute to the overall body of knowledge? Um, going to the topic of the federation and before handing over to Andreas. Um, federation can come in many forms. Uh, so it could be uh, nested, so pretty much like I subset selected from a wider platform or subset. Um, and in a way, we in a virtual perspective already have this, right? I mean, if you think of data brokerage, maybe through recommended systems or through facilitated data circles, then, then here I take the richness of an underlying platform B and I create solution specific sub platforms A to N that provide um, a subset of what is needed. Or in an alternative way, if you look at the embedded and forking model, uh, I can create lenses. But what we have chosen, of course, because you need to start somewhere, um, and the federation is a fairly new approach, is the lower right meta platform. Um, and then from there, we will certainly aspire to go further. And maybe Andreas, you can elaborate a bit further on that aspect. Thank you, Bert. Um, if you if you look on on the idea of uh, the trust as a federation and as a meta platform, um, as you have seen in the small drawings on the slide before, uh, there is, so to say, uh, the intention to create a meta platform where you can uh, aggregate proprietary uh, or any other kinds of data assets, maybe directly. Uh, but also connect different types of meta of data marketplaces directly uh, into the meta platform and also include open clouds, maybe open research uh, data or other open data which need to be qualified because sometimes in open data platforms the, the data is uh, rather rather complex or unsorted or not consistent so much. But what, what we think is for a, for a business use, you need to have qualified good data. And uh, what we want to do is uh, with the standardization of this process, we would like to uh, combine different types of, of data providers as data markets as intermediates or other uh, proprietary uh, providers to that. Next slide. So if we, if we look on the value creation, then we have a couple of pain points and uh, what we think in the trust project uh, could be potential aspects, what we can do. So on the one side, you have lack of traffic to data markets. So the total number of data buyers, uh, Bert mentioned the Azure marketplace for Microsoft, which was uh, not uh, very successful in the first years. So uh, the potential of a meta data market is that you can forward traffic and you can, um, so to say, uh, earn money from lead creation or what we call commission brokerage. So that is one aspect. You have the second aspect, the insufficient uh, economies of scope. Um, that means that the question is how to um, increase the uh, value through combination of data sets, which um, might be in different data markets or different data sources. That is at the moment not the, the point, as you, as you heard that we have lots of niche data markets. 
And uh, very often it's, it would be interesting to combine different niche data uh, to new data insights. And uh, that is uh, it's necessary to have an overview. It's not very common for users to uh, register on existing 10 data markets um, and to search on 10 different places. So it would be much better to, to search on one place in the Trust Meta data marketplace. So um, you see risk of uh, the question of uh, insufficient uh, value capture for harvested data. Um, the question is how can we on the one side um, use qualitative open data, uh, on the other side how can we uh, avoid being, so to say, overwhelmed by the millions of open data. So you can find very specific historic data, which is public data, which is might be not interesting for uh, business use. So that is important that we have a kind of mechanism to identify qualified and complete data sets and assets. And uh, I think that is uh, one aspect not to lose yourself in the total number of available open data. Then what is what is very important is, uh, now you switched, Good. yes, thank you. Um, the question is of the infrastructure, uh, because infrastructure is um, to create a data market or metadata market is not, not easy and that is very costly. And uh, what we think is that through good interoperability and common standards, it would be much easier to, to come to uh, a comparable prices or cost sharing on the infrastructure. That is actually the same with the economies of scale for the operations that is uh, important that uh, we don't have so many different um, data market infrastructures so that we try to find uh, the possibility to have shared services, for example, billing or kinds of quality checks or, or other data related services. And the IDSA, for example, is, is working exactly on that, how to, how to connect uh, services, how to create services which help all data spaces. And in the data spaces, they have uh, their, their work and their, their um, industry specific ideas of sharing data. And the last is the inability to track and sanction violations of data market code of conduct. That is uh, the problem, as, the, as Bert mentioned, if you, if you buy a data set, you can reuse it and maybe sell it on another data uh, market. So that is important that uh, our trust meta data marketplace is focusing on a central register and a good authentication uh, process for data market users also thinking of contracting, smart contracting and watermarking for data sets so that it's, uh, so to say, provided that the uh, reuse, the un, un, unexpected or un, unallowed use of data is not there. Next slide. So um, that is, uh, comes to the, the question of interoperability to have a ecosystem uh, of data markets, it's important to uh, focus on the interoperability and the standards and the IDSA framework is providing a very good standard for interoperability. And that is uh, why uh, IDSA is also part of the trust consortium. And we will have a look uh, to implement this uh, idea in the ecosystem. Next slide. So in the core, you can see the data value chain and step by step, you can see the different stakeholders which are involved. If you think from the core data value chain to the big data ecosystem, you need on the right side, if you look on the landscape, you need to have data holders, data users, and then you need to have these uh, enabling players which help to create uh, more open uh, interaction between buyers and sellers. Next slide. And that is a research from uh, Fraunhofer ESST in, in Dortmund. They came to the same idea th going through the ideas of what is profitable, what is less profitable. And they come to the conclusion that data space operations and provider 
and also the um, trusted data services, these are the most profitable things. Next slide. Yeah, but this I think uh, we already there, and um, just like um, building on what what uh, Andrea said before, we look and how maybe you can get involved in what we do in the project. Um, uh, let me even go back to the slides. Um, it's a bit shocking, isn't it? I mean, like there's too much red and too much low profit uh, space, um, and uh, maybe one thought. Maybe it's just like a very philosophical, but I find it extremely interesting. As um, if uh, our European data strategy mandates an open architecture and interoperability uh, to have a different approach to big tech, um, then it's very interesting because um, uh, data markets are just a certain amalgamation of technology components that help solve business problems. Uh, and at a macroeconomic level, um, having the ability through open standards, through regulation, also through ethics considerations, um, also have commitment contracts, um, we, we, we arrive at a situation where we can really create value out of the diversity of the European data landscape. On the flip side, um, if you think that you can uh, be the next unicorn um, in operating a data market, chances are there's not that much space left because many of the base service levels, the infrastructure services, um, may become something that ultimately has to be provided as public infrastructure funded potentially by industry organizations, governments, or even the European Union itself. Whereupon, in a modular fashion, in a service-oriented open architecture, we have flexible configuration and reconfiguration of capabilities that are applied as and when needed for a problem solution. So on a microeconomic level, um, actually, uh, we might find ourselves in a space where we have lots of Schumpeterian innovation with uh, creative destruction, um, where um, there are not uh, that many unicorns at play, but a very rich ecosystem. And, and our aspiration here is trust is, of course, to uh, help bring that about. Now, all that's good, all that's set. Before I hand over to Manaela, who will also let you know what's next uh, by means of our webinar series and then how to get in touch uh, and we'll open of course the floor for questions. Um, in the project we are currently uh, on the left hand side in creating the business model itself um, and uh, if you want to get involved um, either on the business side of the project or to be in touch with some of our technology partners or our friends from KU Leuven who look at regulatory and legal aspects, please reach out to us. Uh, and we will also share the presentation. Manuela will give contacts. There are various ways to interact. We are having an advisory board. Um, um, we also we are currently setting up focus groups with market constituents from the business, the technological and the regulatory side, um, so that um, we really have space here to incorporate your thoughts, potentially your needs, into what is output of the project, which in large part are also recommendations to the European Commission. And of course, ongoing knowledge dissemination through webinars and, and then workshops will also be in the space. But I think Manuela is better positioned than me to talk about this. So, thank you very much, Bert and Andreas, for your interesting presentation about the business aspect of trust. I would like to um, ask the audience now, are there any questions from your side? You can unmute yourself if you want or just uh, drop your questions into the chat box.
Okay, so then I think everything was clear. So then I would like to announce our next webinar. It will be at the end of March about the legal aspect of trusts with Kao Löwen and the Safety Project. We will um, post the exact date and the topic on our trust uh, on our trust's website. You can find the link here on the slide. All right, um, then save the date and we are looking forward to seeing you also there. If you still have any questions or want to get in touch with us, um, here you can also find our email addresses, just drop us a message. And at this stage, I would also like uh, to thank the semantic web company, um, Thomas Turner, especially because they supported us today technically. Thank you very much for that. And this was it for today. And thank you very much for participating. And we would like to see you in our next webinar at the end of March. So have a good afternoon and take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.